السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Good evening everybody Sorry I am late Had a long work day And please excuse my absent Absence for the last week or so very 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 long uh long days of week long works long work weeks uh new landscape alhamdulillah so this is our peak season so uh alhamdulillah we, you know we um we um alhamdulillah we you know we, we get into it we get into it, alhamdulillah so inshallah ta'ala since it's late we won't stay too long Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh this is one of my favorite topics. Uh we're getting back in Monday nights. I switched it from Sunday to Monday. Sundays are just really 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 busy for me, so it's hard for me to uh to get on here on Sundays. So I switched it to Mondays. And uh Wednesdays we'll still do Aqida and Fridays inshallah ta'ala we we'll do Friday night fifth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everybody. Drop me a comment, even if it's a, just a, a, a salam alaikum. Uh, that helps the algorithm, helps bring support, share, like. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. We put in a lot of work uh, behind the scenes, and we're doing our best to bring y'all the best broadcasts that we can possibly, that we possibly can, that are along the wrote the guidelines of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, uh, which is the original, the one true original way of Islam. So we're trying our best uh, and to put out um, um, meaningful material. So uh, don't be a hater. Hit that, hit that like button. Hit the share button, so we can spread the influence of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. It is very, 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 very important because we have a a, a, a fight of influence uh we, we, we're up we're up against a fight of influence uh uh with the with the with the salafi minhaj and the, you know the with the wahhabi salafis however you want to call them so uh inshallah ta'ala we'll dive straight in one of my favorite topics following a madhab or not following a madhab a school of thought so I'm cutting into the sisters' clubhouse. Oh, <laughs> no wonder, uh, no wonder Nyla's phone is so loud in there. I can, uh, I can hear it loud as I don't know what. Oh, subhanAllah. It says no share button. Yeah. I don't know how to fix that. It should be, uh, should be, um, it should be public. SubhanAllah. Uh, let me see. I don't know why it's not, because I don't see a share button on mine either. If you're watching from the Facebook page, the true Aqida of the Salaf, I said I got a Wahhabi phone. <laughs> I got the, I, I just might. I got that doggone nose phone 14. Uh, I don't know why I say you can't share it, because I'm looking at it on my phone, and it also says that you can't, it also says you can't share. Let me see. Let's see something. Okay, so if you click, if you back out of the video, like watching the video, uh, the share button is like on the post. I don't know if I, if y'all can see it or not, but I I backed out of it. It's still playing up under, but if you see there's the share button right there. So if you back out of it, you can see the share button, and then you can click back on it. Inshallah, Taala. Okay, so we're going to dive in. So a quick primer about, uh, hey, Imam Abu Muhammad, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First and foremost, y'all, excuse my head being uncovered. I got a big old scratch right here. Not a scratch, but a cut on my head. It hurt. Uh, it, it even hurt me to shave. So I, I don't have my head covered. It's not good to be in public without your hair cut, head covered. So y'all, please forgive me. I got a medical reason. That'll be... The next thing for the Wahhabis, like, oh, don't listen to him. He doesn't cover his head, so he doesn't know Arabic. 
<laughs> they find anything. But uh, like, share, like, share, like, share. Drop a comment. Drop a song. Like them. Even if you just tune in just for a second and just give a view and then keep it going and show support and it brings up the algorithm and ultimately it brings up the morale for us to want to do so. Brothers who, uh, brothers and sisters who have been traditionally taught, it's kind of discouraging. I must say, y'all, it's kind of discouraging that we spend so much time with junk on the internet. And when we make a, a strong effort to broadcast Ahl Sunnah wa Jamaah, the influence of Ahl Sunnah wa Jamaah, and, you know, we get 10 views, five views, uh, especially uh, podcasts like uh, what Imam Abu Muhammad Ali. Uh, I'm so trained that when I say Muhammad, I automatically say Ali. Ali <laughs> Imam Abu Muhammad Hafizahumullah. <laughs> Hafizahullah. <laughs> May Allah, Allah preserve him. And the brothers that uh, do the uh, the Soul Solutions podcast, uh, they be talking about a lot of relevant stuff. Uh, you like it, a, like it, a, or dislike it. You know they having relevant conversations and people not tuning in. And it, it, these are the kind of things that we should be watching. This is what we should be utilizing the internet to do: is to uh, utilize it as a tool for uh, for your understanding and for your iman. That's what that's what we should be doing with the internet. I ain't saying, well, I am saying, try not to do things you shouldn't be doing on the internet. But if you know, most of us waste time, especially on the internet. But you, know, you should at least be, you know, making some type of effort to, you know, uh, to further your understanding. And brothers, you know, my 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 story is unique. My my approach to Islamic education is unique. Um, same difference with uh, uh, Brother Abu Muhammad, Imam Abu Muhammad, uh, Imam Khalil, um, our, another one of our Ustad, um, uh, Saleh Abdul Mujib, um, my right hand man, uh, uh, Nadir, uh, Nadir Abdullah. You know, we have a unique walk in Islam. Uh, people, uh, uh, people that come from where we come from don't become Muslim, let alone uh, uh, educated uh, Muslims. So, you know, to get this perspective of Islam, it ain't, you got a handful of people that's making that effort. Brothers like Imam Amin, got to give him credit. Uh, like or dislike, got to give him credit. Um, same difference with um, Imam Naeem, Imam Fahim, uh, uh, Boom Bap, <laughs> Imam Boom Bap. Uh, we, we all got a unique experience. And, and, and a lot of people, not as many people as should, uh, are tuning in and it's kind of disheartening it kind of make you want to be like oh man you know people ain't they ain't they ain't on the hock i'm gonna go on over here just hide in my corner and live my life and live in peace so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to uh raise the uh the proper influence in our society i mean all right so getting into the, the today's presentation one of my favorite topics if not the favorite topic is uh should you uh is following a madhab legit or not legit so the biggest uh sect in islam is called uh the salafi minhaj uh or better known in the scholarly world as al uh the people who follow uh uh, uh ibn abdul wahab i don't put muhammad on that guy's name and prime example uh, uh one of our uh, ustada uh, uh, Malika Muhammad, uh, my wife Nyla, and a few other brothers. We were on a, a, a friend of ours post, and uh, she had posted. You know, I mean, she's she's Salafi, alhamdulillah, and, and, and she's learning. Um, she's learning. She's making her best effort at learning. Um, you know, so uh, you know, she made a post uh, promoting the Salafi books, and you know, we spoke our part. And especially the women, I, you know, I appreciate that our women can get on there and, and speak their parts and and it don't turn into nothing. It's always me and uh, Abdul Majib was a uh, song like uh, uh, me and the, uh, uh, me and the brother Abdul Majib and uh, and uh, Imam Nadir Abdullah. We was joking uh, uh, this morning on the phone. <laughs> we talked like every day and we were joking. Uh, was talking about how the how the Wahhabi brothers they love a damsel in distress. <laughs> they love a damsel in distress, man. If a sister, 
if she's Muslim and she's making some type of effort at reading books and trying to learn Islam, boom, here they come. They swoop. It's like they got a group or some of like like Salafi brothers that they like. You heard about this sister? You heard about that sister? And you know they all friend requesting her or whatnot or watching her because Wallahi Taala. And it used to happen with my wife. I joke at her about it all the time when she used to be a Wahhabi. She was a default Wahhabi though. She wasn't like a car carrying Wahhabi. Uh, that was the, her first uh, her first introduction to Islam, so she didn't really know any better. So, uh, uh, you know, she used to make posts, and you know, sisters make posts all the time. <laughs> you know, uh, like what is like what is uh, uh, what is the meaning of sharik? Or they post, you know, just hypothetical questions like that. And I remember one time, like when I really like noticed my wife on Facebook, she uh, she had posted, uh, "Imagine there's no Salafi masjid in your town." <laughs> and then, like, if you if you go in the comments, it's like a hundred Salafi brothers. There. Oh, sister, may may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless you, sister. May and you know they ain't even Arab, but uh, they that's not the Arab accent. We call it the Wahhabi accent. <laughs> brothers go to Yemen and come back with a whole accent. <laughs> we joke about it all the time. <laughs> but anyway, we was on the post and, and it was like 50 brothers on there. And one particular brother who trolls me all the time, I don't even know his name. His name Abdullah something, Amriki or something like that. He, he trolls, he'd been trolling me for like a year and a half, almost two years. And I bust his head every time he pop up. Y'all know that game at the uh, at the festivals, like when the thing pop up and you got to hit it before it go back down. That's 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 how that brother is. May Allah subhanahu wa taala um, guide him to Ahmed Sunnah wa Jamal. You know, I'm joking with him. I don't you know I don't know the brother personally to not like him or whatnot. But you know, every time he pop up, boop, <laughs> I gotta go upside the head. And then he disappeared for a little bit, and then he reappears. But it, it's always like on some sister's post. Always. That damsel in distress, you know, they swoop in and, you know, they copy and paste and all these comments. My point in saying all that is, oh, excuse me. Bismillah, rahman rahim fil awli wa fil awli wa al-akhiri, inna alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. So, like, if you don't know the stuff, like we getting ready to get into, if you don't know this stuff, you will be taken by it. It sounds very heroic that we must save the Ummah. The Ummah are pagans. Most of the Muslim brothers and sisters are pagans and they worship in graves. And you must save the people who say la ilaha Allah. And if they don't want to follow you, then you got to cut off their heads. This is, it sounds heroic. It's very convincing, but at the essence of it all is simple it is simple and it's simple and it attracts simple-minded people no offense no offense i'm just speaking facts you don't have to learn like when we're doing friday fit i get the least amount of views on friday fit i get the most amount of views in these kind of videos when it's some beef or some drama we ain't really getting into a lot of technical stuff it's just me making fun of the salafis you know, poking my eye at them, poking, poking my finger in the eye. Just get a lot of views. But when we got, when we do uh, our kid on Wednesdays and we, we getting into hard books that's dealing with, you know, deep metaphysical, philosophical uh, uh, constructs, ain't a lot of people there. So my point in saying that is it, 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 being, a, being, an, being an actual adherent to Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah, it requires you to put in some work. You got to know some things and and all of these uh, uh, concepts that, you know, I'm striving to learn and understand and impart to the community at large. These things are pretty, you know, they they put you to work. It requires a lot of time. It requires a lot of patience. You don't have to do that if you're a Salafi. All you got to learn is if a person is a, not a Salafi, then he's a Catholic. Uh, if a per you're not allowed to worship graves. And what else? What is one of the, what is the other slogan, y'all? <laughs> oh, and you can't. And the, the, is the other slogan or the other pillar of being a Salafi is uh, the actual topic today. You're not allowed to follow a madhab. You're not allowed to follow a school of thought. That's the only three things you got to learn to be a Salafi. <laughs> That's it. Then you can pick up some books 
here and there or whatever. But at the essence and the base of it all, that's it. Because anytime you talk to a Salafi, that's all that they say. Brothers go, brothers will see me comment on one of these damsels and damsels in distresses uh, uh, threads. And they'll look at my page. They'll look up my profile. I never look up these guys' profiles, ever, ever, until it get, like, a little heated. Then I might want to know, like, who you are. Like, is, are you a real person? Are you a troll? Are you an agent? Like, the one guy, I forget his name. I don't even remember this dude's name. This dude got, like, three different pages. Nobody knows his real name. I met one person, I think a woman who was married to him. Uh, she's actually, she actually left, like, the Salafi Min Minhaj and, and came to the Sunnah Majmah. He was part of it. I forget the guy's name, man. Start with a, start with a ha. Uh, subhanAllah, I can't think of his name. But he was like a notorious troll. He made all these fake pages. And he, anybody who was not a Salafi, he hunting them down. And he going to drill you in the comments section or whatever. Never going to go live. Never going to show his face. You know, take pictures. No, no, I forget the guy's name, man. He was, he was, he was ridiculous. He was a ridiculous nut. But, um. Um, my point is, uh, anytime you talk to any of them, that's all that they say. That's all that they, they look at my profile and see that uh, I have Al Maliki Al Ashari on my profile. And they, oh, he's an Ashari, like it's a slander or something. Like, like Imam Ashari was a scholar in our history, <laughs> he was a scholar, he's agreed upon. By and every generation that came after him, he had some opponents, but he didn't have many. You know, everybody, even his opponents recognized his scholarship. So if the if his contemporaries recognize his scholarship, agree or disagree, who are we to come a thousand years later and say, oh, he wasn't a scholar. He was a deviant and he. He was a Khawarij. That that dude fought the Khawarij. Like what, like what part of history are they reading? I ain't going to get off into that. But uh, they ain't reading history. They reading pamphlets. Uh, they reading doctrinal pamphlets. That's it. They have a, a certain set of beliefs that was constructed by Ibn Abdul Wahhab and, and his helpers, uh, Fawzan and, Ibn, uh, and Bin Baz and even Madhal. Like they all contributed to the Salafi doctrine and you're not allowed to go outside of that doctrine if if you're a Salafi. And I'm saying that freely in the tongue. I'm saying that freely in the tongue. No, a Salafi has never told me that. No. But in observation and in talking and engaging with them, you are not allowed to leave outside of uh, uh, Fauzan, Ben Bass, Madakhal, and... Uh, and uh, uh, what's the guy name? The Hadith, the fake Hadith expert. What's his name? Uh, Al Albani. And uh, oh shoot, hold on one second. I gotta take this cup. Hey, good brother. Yeah, I gotta. Um, I'm doing this live stream video. Let me, can I call you right, right back in like like an hour? Okay. <clears throat> Got my phone was on silent. I don't know how to put iPhones on silent. Oh yeah, you gotta click that button. I forgot. Okay. So uh I'm saying that in dealing with these guys and observation, uh 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 they'll they'll always say, Where's your Dalil? Okay, I give you the Dalil. Here's the hadith. Uh we talk about Tawasu. They stay stuck on certain things. Ask you for Tawassu. We give you the hadith for Tawassu. Oh, something was wrong with Imam Nawawi's Aqidah. Okay, well, where'd you get your Aqidah from, brother? Okay, I learned this in Tahawi. Oh, well, Tahawi, he had, there were some difficulties with Tahawi. Like, 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 the people that they follow was not even on the level of the, of, of the actual Aima of, you know, the Mujtahidun. Uh, the, the Mujtahidun and Mujtahidun. They were not on that level. Ben Bass was not on the level of Imam Nawawi. Uh, none of those scholars, Fauzan, Ben Bass, all any of the Salafi scholars you wanted, uh, the, even the ones today, uh, the, the nice looking light skinned guy that taught in the Prophet's Masjid, I can't even ever remember his name. That guy, he ain't on the level of Imam Ash'ari. He ain't on the level of, 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 of Nawawi. He's not on the level of Abu Dawood. They, they actually collect the hadiths. That they graded okay. 
And then Al Albani came behind these guys and said, Oh, Al Albani graded it Daif. He wasn't no Hadith scholar. Al Albani was not a Hadith scholar. I like it. Like, and, and, and why I say that the Salafi Minhaj is simple and you got to just know those three things, they accept Al Albani as a Hadith scholar for no reason whatsoever. No scholar during Al Albani's time recognized him as a Hadith scholar. He had no friend contemporary. He had no, he had no legitimate contemporaries. We know of, we only know of uh, 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 the legitimacy of some scholars through scholars that we know are legit. We, we only know of them well, because of that. Nobody went against the people that we follow in Al Sunnah Wa Jamaah. Nobody went against Imam Ashari. They had opponents and, and the level of disagreement that they were on, we not on. We're not at that level. So my point is, it's it's very simple to just like learn some pamphlets as opposed to getting technical. And 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 if if somebody questions Al Albani, okay, well, what are you why are you questioning Al Albani? Why 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 don't you want to follow him? Because he doesn't fit the criteria to be a muhaddith. In order to grade a hadith, you have to first be a muhaddith. Nobody gave him an ijazah to be a muhaddith. So why are people taking hadith from somebody who did, who was not a muhaddith? And then he's going against the muhaddithun. He's regrading stuff that Bukhari and Muslim who had nobody disagreed with the criteria that Bukhari and Muslim set. Nobody. People have disagreed with the, some of the hadith and even with their own criteria, but they're at that level. That dude wasn't at that level. He don't even have his own hadith book. How how in the world can we can we can 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 Al Albani, Ben Bass, Fauzan, and uh, uh, Ibn Abdul Wahab? How can those guys go against the established Fukuha and and the other Mujtahidun when they first didn't have their own madhab? They don't have their own hadith collection. There is not a Sahih collection of Balbani, Alabani. Uh, there's no, there exists not a Sahih collection of Bin Baz, a Sahih collection according to uh, Ibn Abdul Wahhab. You know why? Because they were not Muhaddithun. So, how in the world can you not be a Muhaddith and go back and grade and regrade the work of the actual Muhaddithun? How can you not be a faqih? How can you not be a scholar of fiqh? Ben Baz, Fauzan, uh, Al Albani, uh, uh, and Ibn Abdul Wahhab, they have no recognized ijazas from any from any faqih in their time. Any faqih, no legitimate faqih who was even in the station. If y'all read the history about when Ibn Abdul Wahhab stormed the Makkah Makarama, You'll find fatawa. I have downloaded fatawa from the four, from some of the four uh, 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 the the scholars of the time, the muftis at that time that fought, that were in power the, uh, uh, from the four schools that everybody recognized that he went against and he tried to kill. His own brother was a recognized scholar in the Hanbali uh, of uh, Madhab. And he tried to kill his brother. His brother was a scholar before him. His brother wrote a whole book going against that man. And his brother and his father disowned him. And they were already scholars in the madhab before this dude even started anything. How on earth can, it, can, can you follow somebody like that? They're fake. And I and I and I have no reason to not like any of them dudes. I didn't know them. I I I don't have any personal any of the people who are Salafis nowadays. Any of the Salafi imams, Saudi Arabia. I don't have no reason to dislike them. No reason. No reason. But when you looking at things from a sincere technical viewpoint, you got to be real with yourself. 
If you can't look at what Ibn Abdul, first Ibn Abdul Wahab saying the time of the Salaf, the Salaf this, and Tawassal during the time of the Salaf, nobody worshiped graves and all the stuff that they made up. They claim in Salaf, 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 they've reinvented themselves to be the Salafiyun, the Ahlu Salaf. And you cannot find one of their pillars, one, one of their pillars, one of any of the stuff that are the Tawheed Rububi'a, Tawheed Uluhiya, you can't find none of that during the time of the Salaf. Go. No, go. You can't find none of that during the time of the Salaf, the actual time of the Salaf. You can find none of their beliefs. Of, how are you a Salafi if your belief systems are not found in the actual time of the Salaf? But I'll tell you what you do find in the time of the Salaf is our belief system. We are getting a fighting about a statement that Imam Malik made in regards to Istiwa. This is a statement from my scholar, from my madhab. Where is the where is the belief system from the Salafi or the Wahhabi uh, uh, madhab in the time of Malik, in the time of Abu Hanifa, in the time of Imam Ahmad, in the time of Imam Shafi'i, rahmatullah alayhi? Where is y'all scholars? And don't talk about Abu Dawood al-Zahiri. Don't talk about him because the only reason why y'all know about him is because of our mujtahidun mentioned him. Our fiqh books mention, uh, some of our fiqh books mentioned the Zahiri uh, uh, opinion. And they were mentioning it, uh, saying, going against it, saying that it was wrong. Don't mention Abu Dawood al-Zahiri, rahmatullah alayhi. Don't mention him. Where is the belief system of al-Albani? Where is that grading system of hadith? Where is that? Where? Where? What are the roots? What is the asal of 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 that belief system in the actual time of the salaf? Where is it? Now, I've been challenging the Wahhabis since I came home for anybody to find those belief systems during that golden era uh, of scholarship. Not even in the, you don't even find that stuff in the person they hate the most. Imam Ash'ari, Abu Mansur. They don't, you don't even find those deviant beliefs in that time. You find the Jahmiya, uh, some of the Khawarij, um, and like a few other main, uh, uh, I forgot the other, some, what the other big uh, sect. I can't think of it off the top of my head. You find those deviant beliefs and you find those scholars fighting against those deviant beliefs. You don't find no debate about grave worshiping in the time of the Salaf. You don't find fatawa on grave worshiping in the time of the Salaf. And don't mention Ibn Taymiyyah, he was not a scholar during the time of the Salaf. And even he was kind of wishy-washy on, he was the, he's the only person that they follow that has any type of legitimacy. And even he didn't practice the tuck fear and calling Muslims mushrikun if they make if they do to He wasn't he wasn't Ibn Tamiya rahmatullah alayhi, when you actually read his books, like and you're not reading some some falsified translation of Ibn Abdul Wahhab's doctrine about what Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi, may or may not have said. When you learn Arabic for yourself, or you know somebody who knows Arabic, and you read uh, 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 Ibn Taymiyyah, uh, um, his works in Arabic, because a lot of his stuff ain't even translated. Most of his stuff ain't even translated. I got the proof. I got it downloaded on my on my computer right now that Ibn Taymiyyah was not against Tawassul. He was not against what they call grave worshiping. So even Ibn Abdul Wahhab don't even match up to the stature of, uh, of, uh, of Ibn Taymiyyah. And, and Ibn Taymiyyah didn't even go against Tawassul. He went against people not knowing the fiqh of Tawassul. And according to him, for what he was seeing in his part of the world, 
people were doing to us incorrectly. They were saying things incorrectly that would be taken as the the duat going directly to the oh the the wali or the olia at that grave. They were saying things incorrectly, and him being an actual faki and a mustahid, an actual mustahid in his madhab, gave a fatwa. Whether you agree or whether you don't agree, he gave a fatwa to not do tawassul because people. And it's also something mubah. It's not a, a pillar of belief like uh, 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 like like the Wahhabis believe. It's not a pillar of belief. It's something simply permissible to do. He gave a fatwa against something that was permissible to do. And he said, "Don't do it because y'all not doing it right." That's what Ibn Taymiyyah said. I have the uh, the fatwa in Arabic. I have it. You put this in a Salafi's face, and they'd be like, "Oh, oh, oh, oh." What do you wipe over the socks? That's what they do. When you bust their head, when you give them the hawk, they act, they change, they change their position. They don't even answer you. Like the guy in that thread on the, uh, on the sister's post that uh, Ustad uh, 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 Manika Muhammad just gave, gave the brother the switch. Uh, uh, everything he asked for, we all gave evidence for. And every time we gave evidence, he turned to another issue. And I got to say this. I have to say this. There's like a secret society group of Wahhabis that do nothing but troll people on the internet. And then they seem, they seem knowledgeable. Like he asked Sister Malika Muhammad about the tafsir of an ayah. This is dangerous stuff. He asked her about a tafsir. He asked her for the tafsir of an ayah. And alhamdulillah, she, she denies. She's like, I don't know the tafsir, so I ain't going to comment. That's not what they do. They go in and, and, and interpret, they go and interpret the tef, the tefasir on their own. I mean, the ayat on the Quran on their own. You can't say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words what he never said. Big problem. When you look at these ayats that they're giving you, when you go back to the time of the salaf, when you go back to the actual time of the salaf, when you go back to the actual time of the Salaf and you read the Tafasir, it ain't the it ain't the Tafsir that Ibn Abdul Wahab is given. It ain't the Tafsir that Tahir Wyatt is given. It ain't the Tafsir that Madhal given. So who you go, whose Tafsir is you gonna take? And and sidebar, all those ayahs that they use, those ayahs are against disbelievers. They're against people that, that don't say la ilaha la la Muhammad Rasulullah. You cannot use an ayah that Allah was addressing the kufar to, for towards Muslims. Mr. and Mrs. Salafi, whether you like it or not, I'm a Muslim. You don't like that man? I shout it. Oh, well, I still say la ilaha la la Muhammad Rasulullah. And I got the same respect for you, Mr. and Mrs. Salafi. You say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So I'm going to refrain from pronouncing takfir on you until I see you say, until I actually see you say kufr. And then we got to make a decision on is this an act of kufr or is this kufr in your aqidah, your belief system? They don't even know the fiqh of takfir. They don't know the fiqh of, of, of kufr. They don't even know it's actually haram uh, to force a person to a takfir. It's actually haram to ask a brother or, or a sister something that would cause them to say kufr. And you see the Wahhabi, the Wahhabi do it all the time. Where is Allah? Where is Allah? Like you trying to get me to say kufr? That's haram within itself. I don't know how I just got into that rant, but this kind of this this topic burns me up. Bottom line is. You fall into all of that confusion when you when you adhere to these these deviant sects. And I'm not saying that maliciously. It's deviancy. It is Dalala. And we have all the evidence. It is Dalala. I, I'm, I don't know no other way to put it. And I'm not going to play with it. I'm not going to play with it because it's not a playing matter. It's not a playing matter. And I've been adamant from day one, I opened my mouth. This is not another school of thought. It is deviancy. I got some friends that are Salafis. 
I, I like them. I love them. But your belief system is Dalala. It's deviant. It's not the correct path. It's not what we find. So I want to close my rant and then get into this book for a second. Uh, uh, I'm going to close my rant or that introduction into this topic of is it legit, uh, is following the school or not following the school legitimate or not? It is legitimate because uh, our scholars say that our dean is by transmission. It's not by whether you like the fact that I believe in Tawassal or that a Muslim might practice that I believe in the Mawlid. It ain't about that. Whether you like me or whether you don't like me or you like what I do or whether you don't like what I do, the deen is by transmission. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran and he revealed something with it. He revealed the sunnah. Uh, so it's all divine. We don't get to pick and choose what we like and what we dislike and then turn that into uh and then turn that turn turn what those people that we dislike into deviants that in itself is deviancy and it's haram we're not allowed to do it so i said that to say what we are hold on hold on, hold on. let me use their lingo it's because you got to use the words that they understand. You got to speak to the people in the language that they understand. What we are upon. They love that word, upon. What Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the Maturidiyya, the Ash'ira, the Hanabila, the Malikiyya, the, Ash the Shafi'iyya, the Hanafiyya, the, and the, uh, who am I forgetting? The, I already said the, 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 uh, the Hanabila. Uh, what we are upon has been transmitted in unbroken chains. It has been transmitted to us. Transmitted. Let me see if I can pull up one of our transmissions. I was talking to one of my shiuch, uh, Muhammad Iqbal. Uh, and uh, I was asking him about uh, some, you know, some of the transmissions and so forth. Let me see. Uh, let me pull it up and just give y'all an example uh, uh, of what it looks like. We only learn like the teachings or whatnot, but the transmission is there. Uh, let me see. Um, okay, yeah, here we go. Open it up. Give me just one second. I don't know. Y'all might not be able to see it. It's kind of small. Ah, I happened. I just made it. Oh, man. Hold up. I just made it way too small to be seen at all. Nah, nah, blah, blah, blah. Hey. Dang, man. I, don't, I was trying to blow it up and I ended up shrinking it. Hold on. Give me one second, y'all. Bear with me. Okay, so this book is the Mutalid Imam Malik. It is the it is the transmissions of the Maliki Madhab, you know, our Aqidah, the whole nine. It's a whole book. I don't it's a whole book, three hundred and fifty-nine pages long. This is a whole book. It's one of my she said, I don't know if it is it looked like it's glaring. Uh, y'all can't see it, can y'all? Somebody tell me in the comments if you can see it. Or if you don't go upstairs and leave me alone, you're going to be sitting in that corner. 
goodbye disappear can y'all see can y'all see that is the, is the light glaring it out what can y'all see this somebody tell me in the comments yes or no ah yes yeah, sister touch says you can't see it's kind of law well it's this is a book uh one of my shoes sent me is an all out of and it is 359 pages long about the transmitters of imam malik rahimahumullah and if you know anything about islam then you know that imam malik has the what we call the golden chain of transmission from malik from uh nafir from ibn umar those are those are tabi'in and uh and there's a tabi'in tabi and tabi'in that's a direct connection that's a direct connection to rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam imam malik learned from a person and the people who were taught by umar the great khalifa umar that's who he learned from and it was passed on unbroken so if the Salafis or the Wahhabis got any question? I got a book right here for you in all Arabic because they love Arabic and all Arabic, 359 pages long. And you can knock yourself out trying to learn the, the biographies of all of the transmitters. We have transmitters. We have evidence. And so do our, our Chef A brothers have the same thing. Our Hanbali brothers have the same thing. And our Hanafi brothers have the same thing. We have un- broken chains of transmission for what it is that we say that we believe they don't have that they got a transmission from ben bass from from falzan to ben bass to uh uh to uh to uh uh, uh, uh ibn abdul wahab or what's a guy named abdullah hassan or whatever and then ibn abdul wahab and then it's and then right there boom it's broke ibn abdul wahab he has no transmission going all the way back to uh, anybody in the time of the Salaf, none whatsoever, none, none whatsoever at all. The, the, the one chain connection that he did have was his father. His father is in the Asanid and he broke himself from his father's Asanid. So when we get into tomato, tomato with these guys and gals, or oh, do you believe this? Do you believe that? Do you believe this? Do you believe that? It's not about what you like. It's not about what you dislike. It's about what has been transmitted. That's what it's about. We all know that there's there's three talaks in a divorce. That's we we all that's confirmed through chain through transmission. I don't like that. I wish we could have fifteen talaks, maybe. I'm speaking hypothetically. But maybe I don't like the fact that it's three talaks. Maybe I, I think that it should be 15. But is that legit? No, that's not what has been transmitted. Our dean has been provided for us. We don't get to make the dean. And that's what these dudes and, and, and that's what these dudes do. They make what they like and what they don't like to be Islam. That's it. Okay, so let's jump into the comments. I just that, that just turned into a I mean into the book. That just turned into a rant for 45 minutes, 43 minutes. Y'all forgive me. <laughs> okay, into the book. Isa. Isa, go upstairs and in the room, boy. Okay, the topic. The Mathab schools, Ahl Sunnah, uh, of Ahl Sunnah. What is correct concerning following a school? And this stuff is important to know. It's not trivial. It's important to know because uh, in in your life, when you post, if you get a book and you post it, and it has to be a it happens to be an Ashari or a Maturidi book, uh, the Wahhabis are going to swarm you like a like a like a bee, like bees, and they will and they and they are specialists at confusing people. And they and they and they are promised to do it to new Muslims. They prey on new Muslims or unlearned Muslims. So this stuff is beyond relevant. 
Bismillah. Concerning the practical rules of fiqh, Ahlul Sunnah follows the four madhabs, the schools of Islamic law and obedience to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, without disputing the validity of any of them, despite their differences. These schools agree about the fundamental beliefs and the fundamental rules, and they differ about some of the details of the rules, like if reciting Fatiha is obligatory on the follower in the prayer, or if the imam's recitation is enough for the follower, or if one must make the intention at night to fast for the following day, or if it is enough to make intention on the first night uh, 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 for the entire month. That's a few examples about the differences of the fiqh because they try to play on the differences <laughs> and try to make it seem as if uh, our differences is evidence of the deviancy of the uh, of the madahib now the billah important note important in the past there were other valid schools like uh al zai al uh, the two sufyans and other mujtahidun uh, however only these four madhabs remain the followers of these schools took great care to document their schools and pass them down to the following generations make note of that the largest of the four schools is the hanafi school the followers uh, uh, of the way of the great Persian Imam Abu Hanifa. Next to that is Imam Malik, uh, was his contemporary and the greatest scholar in the city of Al Madina at his time. His way, the, the Malik school, is the most widely spread in Africa and Eastern Africa. Imam Shafi'i, the scholar of the Quraysh, was Malik's greatest student. Uh, his way, the Shafi'i school, is the most is 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 most common in the Levant. <clears throat> as well as Indonesia and Malaysia, uh, but but many Syrians are Hanafi. As for the Hanabalis, uh, as for the Hanbali school, the followers of Ahmad ibn al-Hanbal, it is the smallest of the four because many of the, uh, many of, many of, I don't want to read that. I don't agree with that. Okay, I'm sorry. Many of the Mushabbiha, the people who liken Allah to his creation attributed themselves to the Hanbali school, like the Salafis do now. The educated Salafis will call themselves Hanbali and Fiqh and Salafi and Aqida. That was my, that was my words. That was a, that was a sidebar. sidebar. Uh, they defamed it and repelled people from it. In fact, likeners, the Mushabbiha, uh, uh, were so famously preferring the Hanbali school that in some scholarly works, they referred the likeners as the Hanabila. This is only due to the rotten apples spoiling it for others. And it is exactly like people today wrongly referring to the Wahhabis as Salafis. Kalla. <laughs> Just as the likeners Mushabihah should not be called Hanbalis or, uh, or Hanabila, the Wahhabis should not be called Salafis, for this is a, a heinous misrepresentation. So what he means there is that uh, uh, if you call your, like, he's basically saying we are the real Salafis because we actually follow the, the, the method and we actually follow the minhaj and the belief system that existed in the time of the Salaf and they don't. Uh, and also sidebar, uh, uh, about the Hanabula, uh, we got the same problem today. We got the Wahhabis, uh, attributed, the, uh, attributing themselves, uh, to the Hanbali school. And it's easy for them to slide into the Hanbali school because the Hanbali school doesn't have any conversation on, uh, let me be careful how I word this. They don't have any conversation, uh, any works in uh, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's for a reason. Uh, during, and it's simple. I had to go through a lot to figure this out. But... In the time of Ahmad ibn al-Hanbal, uh, he was dealing with a lot of the mushabbiha, mushabbiha, the people who liken Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his creation. When they say Allah has a hand, but not like uh, uh, our hand, or Allah has a, a eyes, but not like our eyes. They were saying things like this, no, to be like. And uh, Ahmad, uh, Ahmad ibn al-Hanbal, uh, rahmatullah alayhi, he he his his approach on it was to shut it all the way down because it's because that because you could be you not being careful you can become 
you can put yourself in a state of kufa if you're not careful just saying these things. Even if, uh, like we have some scholars who say, even if you say it and you don't mean kufa by saying it, you, you still need to make toba and you left this line. Like you shouldn't even utter Allah likening himself, uh, uh, likening Allah to his creation in no way, shape, form, or fashion. And Imam Ahmad shut it all the way down. So when people would ask him uh, the, the great debate of Kaif, how, uh, how was Istiwa? This was the big divider of people at the time. And, they, and, the, and the Wahhabis slash Salafis are doing this today. They are dividing the community with this whole Kaif debate. How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do istiwa? Imam Ahmad and all of the other Aima, they would only do tough, what we call tafweed. We would confirm what we know to be true, which is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it. And really, none of us have the right to go beyond that. So when people would ask him, you know, careful uh, uh, istiwa, and, and he would say, you know, istiwa ala Allah, istiwa ala the arsh. Allah Ta'ala rose above the, uh, the throne, on the throne. He would just repeat it, and he would leave it right there. And that is the, uh, the way of the Salaf. That's the way of the Salaf. Uh, we have Imam Shafi'i on record doing tafweed, even though the Wahhabi Imams, uh, Fawzan, well, I know of Fawzan to have spoke against tafweed. I know of uh, Ben Baz. I've seen him speak against tafweed. Uh, uh, I don't know about uh, Ibn Abdul Wahhab or Al Albani. I don't. I haven't seen them talk about it. But I have seen Fauzan and uh, Ben Baz speak against Tafweed. So now we have a problem. We got Imam Shafi'i saying when those ayats, when the uh, ayat, the unclear ayats about Allah's Subhanahu wa Taala's attributes, Allah Taala's sifat. You, uh, Imam Shafi'i said, you just let it pass. When you're reciting it in the Quran, you just let it pass. Don't think about it. When somebody talking to you about it, you let it pass. Don't, don't bother it. Don't go into it. We have Imam Shafi'i, the great Imam, and and the the the, the Salafi Wahhabi people like to turn themselves to Ahl Hadith. They don't even understand that Imam Shafi'i invented Usul al Hadith. He invented usul of hadith. So you want to talk about hadith. And Wahhabi Salafi people, y'all like hadith? Then you need to be a Shafi'i. Or you need to be a Hanbali. Because th those people are the actual Ahl hadith. We didn't see hadith put into usul. Into uh, 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 so we didn't see usul al hadith before Imam Shafi'i. It existed. He learned it, but to put it into like a, an actual curriculum and science, Imam Shafi'i was the first one. So we got that guy, the pioneer of usul al hadith, being disagreed with by people who didn't even memorize ten hadith or knew five principles about hadith. What kind of sense does that make? If y'all are sincere about hadith, then you need to go learn. You need to go read the Risala. You need to not read it. You need to go learn the Risala of Imam Shafi'i. You need to go learn that. You need to go learn this book. You need to learn this book, Ibn Salah. You need to learn this. This is a whole book. And, and, and look what the word says. Introduction. Introduction. This is all about hadith science. What makes a hadith good? What doesn't make it good? What makes a hadith narrator good? What doesn't make a hadith narrator good? You need to go learn that book first, Mr. and Mrs. Salafi. If you like hadith that much, learn that book. There is no 
Wahhabi or Ibn uh, uh, introduction to the science of Hadith by Ibn Abdul Wahhab, introduction to the science of Hadith by uh, 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 Al Albani. All you get, all you find is books that say Al Albani graded as Sahih. Ibn Abdul Wahhab said that Tawassul was no good. Not even learning the actual principles to be able to have the right to say this is good, this is not good. That's why I said in the beginning, it's like being a Salafi is easy. All you gotta do is make tuck fear on everybody that doesn't, that's not a Salafi, say that worshiping graves is not true. They don't even know the fiqh of Tawassim. They've never, none of them, anybody, anybody who ever says, oh, Tawassim is haram, Tawassim is shirk. You have, they have never even learned the, the fiqh of Tawassim. If you have, you would not be a sincere person if you said the tawassal was shirk after you learned the actual uh, usul and the fiqh of tawassal. They just following some pamphlet. They just blind following some person that wrote a pamphlet. That's the essence of blind following. They're calling us blind followers because we follow uh, Imam Malik and Imam Shafi'i and Abu Hanifa the four schools and the three schools of Aqidah. They're calling us blind followers. Y'all, at least we're blind following Fiq. We're blind following actual intra, uh, 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 principles, uh, 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 actual usul. Y'all blind following pamphlets and fatwas. Ben Baz gave a fatwa about this. Al Albani said that this was Sahih. Okay, why did he say it was Sahih? Why did he say it was Daif? Have any, have any of y'all ever learned how and when you could say something is Daif or, 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 or Sahih? And it's not as easy as picking up a book and says Al Albani graded it Sahih. It ain't. It's complicated. That's why I said it, it, it's not a learn because uh, uh, to be a member of Ahl Sunnah Majma'ah, you got to put in some work, baby. You got to learn that book. How many pages is this book? And this is an introduction. 300 and... Three hundred eighteen pages. This stuff is crazy. And this is just an introduction. And look, I've only gotten as far as page 15 in four years of me owning, it, owning this book. Look at these categories. Uh, sound hadith, a fair hadith, weak hadith, supported hadith, uninterrupted hadith, raised hadith, halted hadith, cut off hadith, uh, loose hadith. This is what is. Interrupted hadith, problematic hadith, misre misrepresentation and the treatment of misrepre misrepresented hadiths, uh, anomalous hadith, uh, unfamiliar hadith, an analysis of hadith, the uh, parale parale parallelisms and attestations in hadith, additions of reliable transmitters and the treatment of them, isolated hadith, defective hadith, disrupted hadith, material interpolated into hadith, forged hadith, mixed up hadith, the characteristics of those who transmit, whose transmission is accepted, and those whose transmission is rejected. These are just these are just topics. And each one is, let me see, I'm just going to give you all an example. One, two, three, four, five. The first five categories, five, 17, 12 pages. The next one is like 11 pages long. Uh, the one after that is 12 pages long. The one after that is two pages. The one after that is six, seven pages. This is, these are pages of, 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 of what it is. And it's, and this is a, an abridgment of hadith. You want to say, you, you want to say that you don't want to follow Fiqh? This is an introductory fit book with tafsir. This, oh no, this is the Muwatta. Sorry, wrong book. It looks like my other book. See, that book looks just like this. This is an in, this is a book of introductory fit of the five pillars of Islam. Look how thick this is. 
before you have the how much is this? Man, this book a thousand pages long, man. It's a thousand pages long. If you haven't learned that stuff, you can't disagree with it. Not learn it. Let me rephrase that. If you don't know this stuff, it's the difference between learning it and knowing it. If you don't know that stuff, you don't have the right to pick up your little pamphlet and say, oh, to what's in the shirt? And you can't follow a muck hub. That's sure. I don't want to hear what Abu, uh, I don't want to hear what Malik said. What did Abu Bakr say? Was Abu Bakr the Maliki? That's, that's like the dumbest things that they can say. That's the, that's the dumbest thing that you can say was Abu Bakr the Maliki. Malik and Abu Bakr didn't even live in the same time period. How is it possible that Abu Bakr would have been a Maliki? Why would you, why would they ask such stupid questions? Was Umar a Hanafi? Umar and, 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 and Abu Hanifa didn't even live in the same time period. But I tell you what, some of Imam Abu Hanifa's teachers were students of Imam Ali and Ibn Abdul Mas'ud, who were high up contemporaries. So you don't think they knew Aqidah? You don't think they knew Fiqh? And they actually had teachers. Two of his teachers, two of Imam Abu Hanifa's teachers were students of the Sahaba. Don't talk to me about what Falzan said. Falzan didn't have a teacher who was a student to a Sahaba. I don't want to hear Falzan's name. Okay, this 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 video is over. I'm, uh, this this topic makes me really mad because this is playing with people's hearts and minds. And there are sincere people who are actually trying to get their life together and live on the right track. And you got people just playing cops and robbers with people's souls. You plan, you plan follow the leader with people's souls because you want to be the imam or you want to be viral on Facebook. You want to be known as a brother who has knowledge so you can get four wives. That's what most of them wabi men are doing. That's what most of them are doing. They want to they want to do videos online and, and they want to sound smart. And so all the sisters be like, oh, mashallah, your Arabic is so good. Oh, yes, yeah, sister, my Arabic good. You married? That's it. You ain't studying. Ain't no way you studying. No way, no how. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's illogical. If you ain't following one of the four schools, one of the three, uh, one, one of the four mothers, or one of the three schools at Akita, you ain't studying, Jack. You reading. You ain't studying, you ain't learning, and you're not on the right path. Because all of the deen that we have today, any of the fifth books, any of the hadith books, they all come from the four schools, and they all come from the three book, the, the, the three schools of Akita. All of the Islamic material. I don't care if you taking that Islamic material and remixing it and regrading it and saying that this is Sahih and I don't agree with uh, Ash'ari or whatnot. You don't have a book of, of Akita. You don't. The transmitters were dead and long gone by the time Ibn Abdul Wahab came. There were not, there was not even many translators around in the time of Ibn Utaymiyyah. This is why he wasn't that strong in Hadith, but he was very strong in Fiqh. There was not a lot of people, not a lot of transmitters like that. Like you cannot be a Rawi if you don't have a Sanad. It's impossible. But that's simple stuff that they don't know because they stuck in those pamphlets. They stuck in those pamphlets. Okay. My time is up. It's been an hour. I got a lot of comments. Sorry, this lesson turned into a rant. It really, this topic really burns me up because there are sincere people who need sincere help in their lifestyle. Sheikh, Sheikh Ismail, what's happening? <laughs> That's our Sheikh, yeah. But there, there, there are sincere people who are trying to live their life accordingly. And the only thing that is going to lead you on the right path in life and the only thing that is going to change you is Islam, 
not his slime. Let me put it like this. There's magic in the in the knowledge of Islam. I'm going to put it simple like that. There's magic in sitting around and saying la ilaha illallah all day. Saying Allahu Akbar all day. Saying, uh, saying the salawat al-Nabi. There is magic in that. These are practices I took up to change me as a person. I'm a person that used to chase people with guns and to try and kill them, allegedly. These words and this understanding transformed a person like that. That stuff came, this is the stuff that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ain't, this ain't king of the hill. And why do you think, look at, look at Philadelphia. Look at Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a Muslim city. Philadelphia is the only Muslim city in America. You got Muslim neighbors. I, I guess you could say Dearborn. It technically is a Muslim city. Technically. But Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a Muslim city. I don't really want to talk about Dearborn. The only thing I'm going to say about Dearborn and Fairfax and all of that, they not Wahhabis. And you don't see a bunch of murders and rape and, and Zina and that. And that's in the, and, and, and they, a lot of them, I think half of them are Shia. <laughs> half of them are Shia. And the Shia got a lot of similarities to the Malikia. <laughs> a lot of similarities in their fiqh. You don't see murders, blatant murders in Philadelphia. You, in Philadelphia, you got brothers from one Wahhabi group going to shoot at other brothers and, and at another Wahhabi group. I got brothers, I got friends, close friends of mine that are boots on the ground from Ahmed Sunnah by Jamal. When we talking to them, we don't get to talk about, hey, let's put a, a halakha together for um um, um, to learn Esau the Salik or Om the Two Salik. We don't have, we don't have, we don't, that's not the conversation when I'm talking to Abu Imam Abu Muhammad, when I talk to uh, Amir Khalil, when I talk to uh, Salih Abdul Mujib, when I talk to Abu Isa, my guys. You know what our conversations be about? The, the, the Wahhabi sisters doing Zina. The, the the Muslim Wahhabi brothers gang banging slide the brothers the brothers on on 25th that down the street from Masjid Ben Baz is going to slide on aid they're going to slide on the ops from uh uh uh, uh from Masjid uh, Falzan on 45th and the only time they're gonna be able to catch that brother is at aid when they know he's gonna pop out with his family or whatever and they're going to shoot it up Brothers getting murdered in front of the masjid. These are the Wahhabis. You got a whole majority Muslim city. And this is the outcome? That's the outcome. Ain't no, ain't, America ain't dropping bombs on there, sending troops up in there, none of that. We can't blame none of that. What can we blame that behavior on? Why has that behavior not changed? Because they have not yet engaged Islam. They're following the, the, the Wahhabi religion. They're not following Islam. They're saying Islamic words. And, 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 and they say the Shahada. We can't go inside their hearts. They say the Shahada. But the, the words, the Tilawah from the Quran, the Tafsir from the Quran, the, the, the teachings from the Sunnah, uh, from the hadith, the teachings of fiqh. They're not learning none of that stuff. So since they're not learning, their behavior is not changing. The only thing that changed is their clothes. The sisters, now they wear the Daisy Dukes up under the niqab, which is halal, you can do that. <laughs> Did y'all get my point? The brothers, you know, they got the bandanas up under the, the, the gutta. They got the same mentality. 
This is what my brothers who are from Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jamaah and they living in the in that beehive. This is what they're reporting to me. This is what's going on, and we have to ask why. We have to ask why. Why in the world can you have predominantly Muslims in a city? They filling up football stadiums when it comes to aid. But Philadelphia has one of the highest murder rates. They are top 10 and top five and murders every single year. Every single year. They need some to so woof. They sitting arguing, talking about the talking about uh, 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 saying la 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 inside a group setting in the masjid is bid I at listen. If you are sitting in the masjid and y'all sitting in the halakha and y'all doing some awrad and y'all doing some uh, uh some some uh, uh y'all some doing some sama, y'all doing what to say y'all call us goofy sufis and stuff. If they if y'all were in the masjid doing that, y'all wouldn't be out there shooting and killing each other or harming and shooting and killing other people in the community. My friends who are leaders in that community are telling me that when Ramadan, like that, the dope fiends in, in Philadelphia are saying they cannot wait until the sun goes down when the Muslims break their fast so that they can get some dope. And they say, why, 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 why don't you, why don't you go to uh, Tom, Tom and them, the guys that's not Muslim and get the case, they said, because the Muslims have the best dope. Well, Allah Ta'ala, this is what's happening. The Muslims, the Muslims have the best dope. Why do the Muslims have the best dope? Because they got morals and principles. They don't want to serve a bad product because that's haram. <laughs> you can't do bad transactions. <laughs> I would be lying. This is what's happening in Philadelphia. These are the people that are arguing with us that are talking about worshiping a grave. You need to go to a Wali's grave and make the du du'a through him so that, you can, so, you, so that you won't be murdered, so that you won't go and murder somebody in the street, so that you won't go sell heroin. If y'all were doing to Soul Wolf, y'all wouldn't have time for all of this stuff. We seeing it scandal after scandal. So many sisters uh, outing brothers out, and it's all coming out of Philadelphia. The girlfriend, the Muslim girlfriend, is now since she couldn't get uh, the uh, since since the imam. Well, there's so many imams in those Wahhabi masjids is getting caught in these sex scandals and stuff. The the since he since his since he wouldn't marry his girlfriend and he got ten of them. Since he wouldn't marry the girlfriend, she going to expose him. And she goes to Facebook and make a live stream about how they've been doing Zina. And she want to expose him and take him off of his position because she's mad that she gave him some Zina and he didn't make her one of his wives. This is Philadelphia. This is Philadelphia. The Wahhabi capital. The Salafi capital. So I'm going to close up. We're going to get in these comments. And my supper is almost ready. Okay. So I don't know if y'all if, 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 getting through that range. You got to follow a mother hub. It's mandatory. Unless you're a mujtahid. Sound like Levan. What up, KC? Isa, Isa Bay, what's happening, man? I ain't seen you in a while, Jack. What's happening? Sister Malika, Jazakumalahu Khaira. I appreciate it. And the Muhammad said, Tech, technology and ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is used properly. Make sure it is. I, I think someone's trying to say. Uh, 
think that I don't think they are the biggest just in the West. Their presence is more. Yeah, that's true. That's that's definitely true. They they're not the majority, and uh, uh, Wabies are not the majority. In the, they're not the majority in America. They're just the loudest. They spend too much time on the internet. <laughs> Since my nigga says it's coming that the that the sisters learned the the, the dean correctly, yeah, because a wife be gonna come and marry you and ten other sisters, tell all y'all the same thing. <laughs> if you don't know the fit, the fit is however he feeling for the day. Well, I I deal with these I deal with this on a on a daily basis. Kwame, uh, Kwame Abdul, uh, Abu Abdul Khalik said they don't have a connection to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi He's agreeing, alhamdulillah. Absolutely, absolutely not. Said uh, they got a pass. Levon Turner said they got a pass that cut and paste. <laughs> he said they got a pass, they got a pass to cut and paste stuff to actually understand. <laughs> Yeah, Levon said a lot of them target sisters, especially African American sisters. Yeah, for real. Tessa Tasha said they are definitely out here misleading, especially the new Muslims. Factual. And the Muhammad said, uh, but the attributes are a part of Akida. Is that why the Ash'ari and Maturidiya don't add them to the schools of creed? I don't know what you mean by that, Sister Malika. But the attributes are a part of Akida. So the attributes are in the uh, Akida. It is in there. Is that why the Ash'ari and Maturidiya? Don't add them to the schools of creed. No, the, the, the when you say Ashari and Maturidi, that is the Akita. That is the creed. It, it, it's all in there. It's all in there. Just like on Wednesdays, we're going through uh, 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 the Akita Sanasia. He's going through it. You know, the first part, he's breaking down the 13 attributes. And then the next part on Wednesday, inshallah ta'ala, uh, he's breaking down uh, the topic will be how the how the 13 attributes is evidence for Allah's subhanahu wa ta'ala supreme existence. Who's I can't see who said that show the book again. I can't see that. It's just saying Facebook user. I can't see it, but the book that I showed was this one, the famous hadith terminology book, uh, intro, uh, introduction to hadith science by Ibn Salah. In this book, Islam in the School of Medina, it's a uh, it's fiqh in the commentary of uh, Maliki fiqh. Those are the two books that I showed. The library of fiqh is so extensive. Maliki Muhammad said, "Library of fiqh is so extensive; it'll take lifetimes to cover them." The wide and salt the intelligence of the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, absolutely. Just to to say, well said. The so called correct Akita and Fal Minhaj. Nyla, what are you talking about? You wonder if your watch will tell you your blood pressure. What are you talking about? Lily Marie Woodsy said, I am a new, Salaam alaikum sister, said, I am a new Muslim and this is scary when you're trying to live right and do the right thing and you have people that are deliberately misleading folk. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, sister, this uh, these programs that I do on this platform, I don't know where, I say you watch them from Facebook, uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7.30, I'm on here 
providing the proper guidance and making my best effort to do so, trying to correct what has been distorted. And we're going over all of the mandatory aspects of belief. This show is just kind of uh, conversational, but we're talking about uh, something that's a big problem in our community, like you recognize. So uh, tune in on Wednesdays because uh, uh, we're reading uh, a book of uh, the, the belief of the Muslims. That's what the series is called. Uh, what we believe, uh, uh, the proof of our laws, subhanahu wa ta'ala's existence uh, via Islam. And on um, Fridays, we're, we're going over our individual obligations uh, in, uh, in purification and prayer. These are the these are the absolute positively uh, a- absolute positive mandatory aspects of Islam that you must know. Those that is your right and your left leg. Proper aqidah and your fiqh is your right and your left leg in Islam, and those two things will walk you, you know, through the path of path of righteousness. Uh, you'll be able to build on top of that. Uh, and that's why I chose to dig hard. Not a lot. A lot of the Muslim people just like being personalities on the Internet, you know, giving motivational speeches via Islam. I don't like that stuff. Give me the stuff that's going to actually help my life. That's what I want. And I'm pretty and, I'll, and I'm I'm with the people. I'm next to the people. Uh, I'm not like some big person. And I got so many people that I deal with and and that separates me from the people. I'm with the people. So and I and, and I said to say that uh, this is what the people think too. The motivational speeches and them thirty second reels of Mufti Mink uh, talking, Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him for the, every good word that he ever said. But it's not practical. It's not practical at all. And and, and even the Wahhabis, it's a it's a trick from Satan. How y'all can't? I, I, we got people in our communities being murdered, blood in the streets, murdered. We got four, 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds hopping out with guns, with semi automatic guns, with automatic switches on there, trying to shoot one or two people. And they shooting men, they shooting innocent people and children and women. A, friend, a, a woman that I knew from school, 37 years old, just got caught uh, uh, downtown Cincinnati. She just got caught in some crossfire with one of these young boys jumping out with switches. Uh, uh, not not too long ago, I think last month, uh, a nine year old got killed in a drive by. Last week, a nine year old was killed. Two guys jumped out and trying to shoot somebody or whatever and killed a nine year old kid. I ain't trying to talk to you about no to whistle. I ain't trying to talk to you about whether I'm worshiping a grave or not. Man, we don't even have graves of Aulia in America, let alone in the hood. Why the world are we wasting time talking about some whether it's okay to worship a grave or not? That stuff is impractical. It's a distraction from Satan. We need to learn our proper belief system and we need to learn our proper acts of worship. Those are the things that will change you individually from the inside out. Not these motivational speeches that you see on TV. You know, somebody going through the fic of uh, the fic, uh, the the, the Ibn, uh, Ibn Abdul Wahhab's uh, book on shirk. Man, that stuff don't even exist here. Sister Malika, uh, Sister Malika, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve her. She just lost her grandson's father to gun violence. Ain't nobody trying to talk about no doggone praying to no graves and should I follow a school or should I not follow a school? Give me the stuff that's going to help me change my life and change the lives of those around me and ultimately change the lives of the people, the adherents of our society so that we don't have to endure these challenges. Let's talk about that. Like Sheikh Ismail, he, he just started a, a new institute, the Sunnah Institute, and, and, and he's going to be focused on Relevant issues to society he ain't on there arguing about rather sitting around saying la 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 and the circle is going to help you or not. Is it bit hours or not bit out? He on there, he, they going to be talking about and dealing with should we be giving our kids to schools where they teaching them to be homosexual, hom- homosexuals? Is, is homosexuality allowed in Islam? Is transgender, uh, uh, being a transgender allowed in, haram, in, in, in Islam? 
is uh, uh, gender qual. What is, I don't even know what they call it stuff like the stuff when they say kids uh, want to choose their gender. This stuff has been forced on our children via the public school and the society at large. We need to be discussing this, learning the thick of that. Not learning whether somebody can worship in a grave or not. We don't even have any awliya of uh, 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 buried here in America. And you need the four schools to be able to find out the figures. Can I slide on this dude and hit him with the switch? Or can my son choose his gender? Can my daughter choose her gender or not? You need the four schools to be able to get guidance on that stuff. You need to be learning that. Not rather you, uh, 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 Abu Hanifa have issues with his Akida, according to Ben Baz, or Al Albani said that this hadith is graded weak. Man, we don't need, we ain't need, man, ain't nobody think about grading no hadith. Help me change my life. We doing that. We doing that. And I invite Philadelphia to do that so that, you know, your women can be married and not in Zina. And your men can stop selling drugs and stop killing people. Come sit down at this masjid and say la ilaha la la with me a uh, uh, hundred times and see if you feel like going to slide on an op. Come sit down in this circle with me and say la ilaha la la a hundred times and see if you want to text your boyfriend back after that. Doing tadhakur, memorying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the hadith says, ihsan is to act as if uh, 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 Allah can see you and you can see Allah. And I'm paraphrasing. When you sitting around doing tadhaku to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you always reminded that Allah ta'ala see and do everything, see, see everything that you're doing. You sitting here memorizing this. You sitting there putting that on your brain. And that'll make you be like, nah, I'm not going to text my boyfriend back today. Nah, nah, bucko, salam alaikum, but you got to marry me. Here go my wallet number. That's what Tasawwuf does. Somebody on the internet then tricked y'all into thinking to soul wolf is like a dance or something. And y'all doing that. The Philly people on there shaking their hips and stuff. And, and what is that? Uh what is that? What is that called? I forgot the dance. I don't even know what they call it. I seen a video of a whole Salafi female Muslim family, a mom and like three daughters, like twerking, twerking, and like they call it the shake that. The, the move that dance with the hips or whatever that the Philadelphia people do and that they just started to trend on TikTok doing. I seen mus I seen Muslim a Muslim a Muslim female family, the mother and the daughters doing it and going live doing it. And you want to talk to me about praying the graves. Okay. It's time for me to eat dinner. But yeah I go. Mm -hmm. I love y'all for the sake of Allah. Kula color have a stuff with Allah we like Allah. Ain't that I said wrong was uh, incorrect. Anything that I said, wrong, sorry, slip of tongue. Anything that I said wrong that was incorrect, it didn't come from Allah, the messenger, our awliya, our shuyukh. It came from my ignorance. Correct me if I'm incorrect, please. Uh, not Wahhabis. I'm talking about <laughs> that was so much of my, I love y'all for the sake of Allah. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, Wednesday, y'all make tawfiq, uh, make do out for me that I have to tawfiq to get off work at a good time. And I can get on here and we can uh and we can get back into the Aqidah lessons. It's been like 10 days. So inshallah ta'ala Wednesday, we will be back uh with the Aqidah, and we're gonna be talking about how the 13 attributes, the 13 certified attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is evidence for his existence. Inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And next time, I'm going to try not to rant so much. Uh, I'm going to try to jump straight into the book, y'all. I promise. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Y'all have a good night.